Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everyone's doing really well. Received a few questions on my emails regarding people that are saying that they just don't like web programming. And these are pretty strong emails. They're saying they want to do everything to avoid web programming, but they're still very interested in software. So thought about that question a little bit today and it's going to be the topic of this video. All right. So for anyone that shares these feelings or just feels like they don't like web development or programming at all, I had the same exact feelings maybe nine years ago, almost 10, a long time ago, 2008. That summer I had an internship doing purely web development and it was really different for me because I was coming from my major, which is electrical computer engineering, really, really different world than the web development world, but I just wanted to try it and get a taste of it. But long story short was after that summer, after those three months, I did not like it at all and it was like kind of a major turnoff for me i didn't like styling css positioning divs you know banging my head to write sql i just didn't like it so after that summer i didn't like web development at all but now obviously that's what i do as my full-time job and i have been for a while so somewhere on that timeline i made a switch but why the first thing that everyone should consider is that when you're first exposed to something like web programming you could be coming from a lot of different backgrounds right if you're totally new you have no concept of technology software programming whatsoever and you're first exposed to web development it's actually really fun and you could be very open to it but what i found too is that if you're already predisposed if you're already technical you've already majored in some kind of engineering field like maybe you're a hardware guy you're already kind of technical then you get exposed to web development you're less open to it because it seems less technical so depending on where you're coming from if you're totally fresh or you have engineering experience before it kind of will influence what how you perceive web development before getting into the meat of this video and talking about this any further long story short too long don't read is that I don't think web programming is going anywhere and it's definitely a useful skill to learn for anyone and I'm gonna to try to back that up in this video but that's a long story short first thing I want to say up front too is that the the reason why a lot of people that have been exposed to tech before the reason why they're they're not very open to web development is because at a pure technical raw sense it's actually not that technical it's not like building a rocket it's not like building the next level of AI it's just from a pure technical perspective web development isn't like high level technology for many people so it's not that technical just let's assume that for now it's not like building a processor but the reason why web programming is so popular why it's so pervasive is not that it's it's not for its technical reasons it's for what it can provide you and that's connecting obviously with a large amount of people through the internet the raw tech of the internet has already been established like we've already put wires under the ocean people billions of nodes are already connected on the internet that raw technical part is already established and what's left over is a means to an end so the, the reason why people are drawn to web programming and the internet is not because of it's so cool in tech, it's because of what it can do, which is just connect you with other people. So this concept of connecting or the concept of a human network is different for many people, right? For some, it could just be a way to build a community with like-minded people. Maybe if you're a business person, it's a way to reach more customers. Maybe if you're like an activist, it's a way to send your message to many, many different people. And just the mere fact that we have a medium of potential communication like that makes it really powerful. So the tech is done. It's already old news, like the networks, all that stuff. It's really cool. It was a technical, you know, crazy achievement, but it's done. Now what's left over is just what are you going to do with that? So let's just talk about one thing that the web changed for sure just back in the old days not even old days but if you're semi old you'll remember the days where you had to go to the store you bought like a plastic container it has a cd inside and you put the cd in your computer to install that like that those days are already almost over due to the internet right nobody goes to the store nobody uses cds nobody just installs something on their computer right so many things we do it's just all through a web browser, all through the internet. All these services are provided through web interfaces. Like everything is accessible via the internet, right? If you make your product or service accessible on the internet, that's so much more flexible than putting it in a box and giving it to random stores, right? So that's just one example of how the web, you know, kind of changed day-to-day -day stuff. But I don't think it's going anywhere because now people just take 
this connectivity for granted. It's almost assumed in many day-to-day -day life for many people. It's just assumed everything we do is connected. It's assumed you can talk to people around the world. It's assumed we have the network. And that assumption isn't going anywhere. Just because human nature too, once you get something, you're used to it and you're not gonna give it up too easily. Like if you can't make phone calls or talk on WhatsApp to your friends, you might get a little upset. So that feeling of connectivity isn't going anywhere people always want that there it's an assumption now so that's why it's not going anywhere and because of that the internet is not going anywhere and so web programming isn't either so back to the main point of the video for people that don't really like web programming really think to yourself why you don't like it I can understand if you're like a pure technologist if you've gone to school and if you've done operating systems high-level theory you've done like compilers and you're a super die-hard technologist, I would see why web programming might be a turnoff for you just because it's not as technical as some of those other things. But I'm not going to change the minds of the die-hard technologists, but what you have to recognize is that the one thing web programming provides is that little bit of human part of it. It's like the ability to connect with potentially millions, billions of people. That's a very powerful thing, not just for businesses, for communities, for people, for politics, all that stuff. So that's why the internet is what the internet is today. Like if you're a super technologist, you should still just stay in your cave, pushing out the latest and greatest compilers, all the power to you. But for maybe the 95% of us, the other side of us, you have to appreciate the human side. And that's still what the majority of people are going to use the internet for. So. That's why I don't think it's going anywhere. I'm not going to change the minds of the super diehard technologists, but if you really don't want to learn web programming, just ask yourself, why would you cut such a crazy opportunity from, what, from your knowledge base? Let's do a little bit of an aside, and I want to talk a little bit more about like the guts of the programming, just a, a little deeper than what I have been, because I've been super high level for this. So web programming, I don't want to make it sound like it's so easy, it's so like, it's trivial it's like nothing compared to like processor design like web programming has its own challenges and they've been crazy there's been crazy architecture systems developed it's not a trivial thing it poses its own challenge just think about the scale at which like amazon google a lot of the crazy web programming the web technology companies operate it's at a crazy level and they've solved crazy problems to get there so i don't mean to like belittle or like make it sound like it's so easy it has its own challenges if you get into the world of web programming or web development, there's pretty much like a bifurcation, like this bot, this polar opposite kind of thing going on. But that's pretty much, I don't like the words, but it's front end to back end. Some people like to call it product engineering versus infrastructure engineering, whatever you want to call it. There's like a clear distinction. So let's just talk about the distinction a little bit more, right? I'm going to call the front, I don't like the word front end, so I'm going to say the product, product side, product engineering part of web development. That's what you're building, the services and products you're building for your customers. This is the most flexible, most dynamic part of web programming because it's always changing. You've got to build this feature, that feature, next milestone. You're going to like redo your website or like upgrade your service. This is directly what service you provide to your customers and that's always changing. So that's kind of like the product or outward facing part of web dev. Now the other side of that coin, which a lot of people call back end or whatever, or I'm going to... I hate backend, so I'm just going to call it infrastructure side. So if you if we just talked about product level engineering, which is usually what the customer sees, the other side of that is infrastructure. And what I mean by infrastructure is like all the engineering that goes into hosting your service, scaling it and making it available to millions, potentially billions of people. And that's also a difficult task. So this whole infrastructure part, this is usually, this is how Amazon got famous, right? You've obviously heard of Amazon Web Services, AWS, all those crazy cloud services they provide. The whole purpose of those services is so you could build your own infrastructure for whatever web application you want. This whole infrastructure part, it's very, it's further away from the customer. Many people consider it being a little more technical. Like you don't have to worry about, oh, the customer didn't like this feature, so, so we should change it. The problems you're facing if you're working on infrastructure, it's kind of like now we have to support 10,000 requests per second. So there's different types of problems. And I like to think of it as the current state of it now is almost like a bunch of Legos and you pick and choose the right Legos to solve your job because in the infrastructure world, it's all been solved. Just look at the scale of Amazon and Google. Look at 
the billions, whatever scale they operate at, it's crazy. They've solved it and it works. And like Amazon has made a business out of it. So they've solved their scaling problem. And then also they've made it a service. So you can use what they've built to solve your problem. So if you ever look inside Amazon cloud services, they have tons of tools, like probably hundreds of different tools you can use. You just pick and choose different ones of them, different pieces of those Legos, and you can build your own infrastructure. So Amazon's really smart because they've made a business out of that whole infrastructure. And many of us, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just pick and choose the various pieces of that. We want that database. We want that kind of web server. We want that kind of whatever. We pick and choose and we set up our own infrastructure. So that's the current state of that. And some people might call it more technical, but it's just different. It's like the foundation you build it. So at the top, you're building application level software for customers, right? And then it's got to run on something. And that's usually the infrastructure and infrastructure for web programming in specific. It's nothing new, like it's been solved. You just got to pick and choose like what you want to do with it. All right, time to wrap up this video. I've been talking way too long, but long story short is that internet is not going anywhere. If you're watching this video or you're the ones that send me the email saying you really don't like web programming, really think to yourself, why do you not like it? Because it's actually a very powerful thing. If you want to stay working on compilers in your cave, all the power to you, just keep doing that. But you have to respect the human factor, the power of having everyone in the world being connected and having access to that and now since we just take that for granted it's not going anywhere we're not let's be real with ourselves we're not going to give up the internet one day now it's just a normal part of life so that web programming is very important to learn and that's almost like basic stuff now right so people are saying ai is basic stuff right now so at the least you can do is also understand how the web works so one thing i forgot to talk about was just my personal thing and what happened after 2008 so like I said like 2008 I did a summer of web technologies and I just dismissed it a lot right I was taking cool courses in school like computer architecture and stuff and why was I styling CSS but after school I tried to stay away from it as far as I could that's almost one of the reasons why I did became an embedded developer just writing C assembly doing C++ for a while but I don't have a good reason for switching all I can say was, all I did was follow the trends, just like anyone else. Like, I'm susceptible to all those trends. When I heard about all those cool Silicon Valley startups, like all these cool web technologies, so many different jobs, I was just, the reason why I switched out of that whole embedded world was just to follow the trend. And after I followed it a little bit, I started to appreciate it a little more. I mean, there's obviously the clear things that benefits from. You have high flexibility in jobs, probably the most in demand. I'm sure many of you know that if you're job hunting, there's many more jobs doing just web dev stuff than writing assembly, right? So no question, it gives you a little more flexibility of where you can choose to work or where you can actually build. But I didn't like see the light when I switched. For me, it was very simple. Just another engineer trying to follow the trends. And then after I followed them a little bit, I started to appreciate it a little more. So it's not a really good reason, but it's honestly the truth. Just following the trends and now I feel like you, it's hard to appreciate something before you really do it, but after you kind of see what it can do, you appreciate it a little more. So that's the least I can do. This whole point of my video is that if you're one of those people that is really like a stickler, you don't like web technology, I'm just going to tell you right now that just do a little bit, try to appreciate it for what it is, and maybe you'll see it, you'll be more open to it. All right, so that's all I have to say for this video. It's been too long.